Debates. Tonight, the candidates for U.S. Senate. Good evening and thank you for joining us for the second of our Granite State Debates. I'm political director Adam Sexton. Tonight we're hearing from the candidates who want to represent you in the U.S. Senate. Like many things this year, the setup for this debate is a little different than usual. Our panelists are here in the studio, WMUR anchor Gene Mackin and WMUR political reporter John DeStaso. To follow COVID-19 guidelines, Republican challenger Corky Mesner is in a separate studio. And because of several votes late today in the U.S. Senate and restrictions around travel related to COVID-19, Democratic incumbent Gene Shaheen is live from a studio in Washington, D.C. Before we start with the questions, let's get a look at the candidates' backgrounds. From approving COVID-19 relief to Supreme Court nominees, the U.S. Senate plays a critical role in shaping American life. But are New Hampshire's interests in these extraordinary times represented best by experience or a fresh voice in politics? We have to use more common sense. The voters decide whether they want to keep you or whether they want to throw you out. Incumbent Democrat Jean Shaheen was the first woman to be elected a governor and a U.S. senator. Republican challenger Corky Mesner is a first-time candidate with a career in the law. Their own personal roots and records in New Hampshire have been a key issue in this race. He's just moved here two years ago to run for the Senate. She's a career politician. She's been there far too long. They have clashed on everything from health care to campaign finance reform, and the winner could play a key role in developing a post-pandemic America. WMUR News 9 evaluated all legally qualified candidates and selected those considered most newsworthy according to its objective criteria to participate in this debate. The candidates will get one minute to answer questions tonight and 30 second rebuttals will be allowed at the moderator's discretion. And thank you for joining us tonight, Mr. Mesner and Senator Shaheen from Washington. We want to start with an opening question about the pandemic that has created this very unique setup that we're in right now. Now, the president needed treatment at a hospital for COVID-19. COVID cases are up in many places. Holidays are coming and people are concerned about missing their families. They're concerned about being out of work. Schools are also in flux. How are Granite Staters going to get through this constant crisis? And Mr. Mesner, we begin with you. Yeah, I think uh, step one is, is uh, follow the guidance. Follow the guidance from the scientists. Follow the guidance from Governor Sununu. Uh, and then focus on family, focus on community, be safe, wear masks, socially distance, wash our hands, and, uh, and be a good member of, of the community, and be a good member of your church and your family, and work together. We need to be compassionate now to each other. We need to care about each other, and we need to make sure that we're taking care of any, everybody in our community. If someone needs some help, Help them out, but do it safely. We can learn how to navigate this economy safely. We can learn how to navigate our schools safely. We can learn how to live our lives safely. And, and the way we're going to do that is follow the science and be good neighbors, be good family members, and be good students in school, kids. Senator Shaheen, how are Granite Staters going to get through this constant crisis? There's no doubt that the coronavirus has changed everyone's lives and so many people are struggling. Um, we have got to see good behavior modeled at the top levels of government. Um, we do need to follow the science. We need to follow mask wearing and social distancing and hand washing, but we need consistent guidance at the federal level and we need a plan for more testing and contact tracing to fully invoke the Defense Production Act so that we're making what we need here at home. And unfortunately, my opponent, while he says follow the science, if you listen to what he said throughout his campaign, he questioned mask wearing during the primary. He said that hospitals weren't in urgent need of funding. He has suggested to his supporters that they not um, follow Governor Sununu's stay at home order. Um, we need to be consistent, we need to let people know we can get through this if we work together and we follow the science, we listen to the medical experts. Let's get right into the questions. We're going to start with the panel and John DeStaso. Good evening. Good evening to both of you. For months now, Congress has been debating a second round of stimulus in response to the COVID crisis. Recently, the president said he was done negotiating and that it should wait till after the election. But of course, he's since changed his mind. Senator Shaheen, just hours ago, you voted to move forward with a targeted bill 
allowing for another round of Paycheck Protection Program loans. But the stalemate continues on the larger, more comprehensive packages. There are negotiations happening among the Democratic leadership, the Republican leadership, and the White House. But why have the Democrats and Republicans still been unable to meet in the middle? Well, we do need to continue to negotiate because people are hurting. They do need more help. Small businesses need help. That's one reason I supported um, moving forward with the second round of PPP this afternoon. But unfortunately, we haven't seen Mitch McConnell and the Republicans in the Senate be willing to come to the table. So the negotiating so far has been done with um, Secretary Mnuchin on behalf of the White House and Nancy Pelosi. We need Mitch McConnell to come to the table. We need to work to get a new package done, just like we did with the CARES Act. I was really proud of the bipartisan work on that package. It passed 96 to 0. As part of that, we were able to get $1.25 billion for New Hampshire, extended unemployment benefits, help for hospitals and frontline health care workers, um, help for communities, um, and the PPP program doubled the amount of money that was first proposed. We need additional help, and it needs to be a big package that can provide the help people need. And Mr. Mesner, was the president's inconsistency about this a mistake? And what specific program do you think needs to be funded right now, and why? Yeah, I, I think uh, six weeks ago, the Senate had an opportunity to pass a $500 billion package to help people with enhanced unemployment and more PPP loans. And Senator Shaheen followed the lead of Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi and did nothing, voted no. That was six weeks ago. Right now, there could be more money for small businesses. Right now, there can be more money for enhanced unemployment. And the Senate could be negotiating these other things now while people are receiving help. That's why we need new leadership in the Senate. This idea of of allowing people to suffer for six weeks, six weeks because of inside the beltway negotiations and holding out while people in New Hampshire are suffering. And that's why we need new leadership in the U.S. Senate. Get it done, you could then have been negotiating these other uh, items right now. Senator Shaheen, you were invoked 30 seconds to respond. Um, well, I agree. It's unfortunate that Mitch McConnell took six weeks from the time the HEROES Act got to the Senate before he was even willing to consider a bill in the Senate. The fact is, the bill that Mitch McConnell put on the floor at the end of July doesn't provide the help that people need. We have a hospital in New Hampshire that just went bankrupt this week. I was at Catholic Medical Center last week. They need financial help. We have got to help hospitals and schools and businesses and everyone who is hurting as the result of this pandemic. And Mitch McConnell has not been willing to come to the table. And my opponent is just another uh, rubber stamp for Mitch McConnell. Mr. Messner, how about 15 seconds on the rubber stamp there? Yeah, you got to lead, Senator Shaheen. You should have proposed money for those hospitals in that $500 billion package. People could be receiving well, we help right it. now. People would receiving help we right now. We proposed, and the Republicans said no. And you should have voted no. on it, and it should have passed, and, and people in New Hampshire would be getting help today. Small businesses are closing, and they need help. All right, let's move on to our next question from Gene Mackin. And good evening to you. We'll begin with Mr. Messner. As we continue to operate in a pandemic economy, new problems are arising for Granite State and American workers in general. There are many who work in jobs where they rely on volume of business or tips to make a living. Waitresses, waiters, bartenders, people who work in salons who may be back on the job but are earning far less. What specifically can be done for them and those reentering the workforce who are now underemployed? Yeah, I, th I think it starts with uh, the small businesses receiving the guidelines they need to open up their businesses uh, profitably. And I am impressed. I have visited so many businesses around New Hampshire and the innovation and the creativity that these small business owners are implementing to make sure their customers feel safe is really impressive because they know for their business to be successful, the customers must feel safe. And I've, I've been very impressed with, with what's going on out there in the small business community. Now, having said that, there are some businesses 
that that can operate uh, safely under the current guidelines. And that's where I think we need help with the PPP loans. That help should be there now. It's not there now, and it's not there now because of lack of leadership by Jean Shaheen. She's been there too long. She follows Chuck Schumer. She follows Nancy Pelosi. She needs to lead and get this done. And Senator Shaheen, same question and response from you. Yeah, unfortunately, my opponent um, has not been paying attention in Washington, or he would understand that the gridlock is there. Mitch McConnell has refused to come to the table. Um, but I am proud of the work that I did on the PPP program. We've helped 24,000 small businesses in New Hampshire. They've been able to keep over 200,000 people employed as the result of that program. And as you point out, there are a number of industries that still need help, particularly the hospitality industry. Unfortunately, the bill we voted on today didn't include the kind of help they need. We need to provide some more work for that. Um, we need to extend unemployment benefits for people in a way that allows them to make it through this difficult period. We need to help the travel and tourism industry in New Hampshire. Um, the PPP program has been great to help places like the Red Arrow Diner in Manchester and Argon Tech in Concord, but everybody needs more help to get through this pandemic. Next question from John DeStaso. Thank you. And Senator Shaheen, at uh, the top of your ticket, Joe Biden has said, quote, we will never get our economy back on track. We will never get our kids safely back to school. We will never have our lives back until we deal with this virus. First, what do you think uh, the former vice president means by this? Do you think the U.S. will need another widespread economic shutdown? And are you willing to uh, risk inflicting financial pain on some in the country in order to potentially save the lives of others? Well, John, that's why we need a plan at the top levels of this government. The Trump administration has not had a plan. That plan, as I said, should include consistent guidance um, from the CDC for how businesses and schools and other in sectors of the economy affected should operate. It's why we need more testing and contact tracing so we can isolate those hotspots so we don't have to shut down the rest of government. And it's unfortunate my opponent has been defending this administration's handling of the pandemic from the very beginning. He even defended Donald Trump when he said we should ingest bleach to get through the coronavirus. The fact is, it is correct. We are not going to get through this pandemic. We are not going to get our lives back to normal until we get ahead of the pandemic. And that's why we need a plan. We need to all be working together, but it needs to allow us to do what we have to with testing and contact tracing so that we can isolate those hotspots, just like New Hampshire is doing in so many areas. That's time. And thank you. Um, and Mr. Mesner, President Trump, who has endorsed you and who you have praised for his leadership, tweeted when, when he was back at the White House after being hospitalized for COVID-19, quote, don't be afraid of COVID, don't let it dominate your life, close quote. Governor Chris Sununu, who has also endorsed you, reacted to that, quote, I'm afraid of COVID. The governor added, I completely disagree with that sentiment that came out of the White House. So who's right here, the president or the governor? And are you afraid of COVID, yes or no? Or why, and why or why not? Uh, John, before I answer that question, I would like my 30 seconds to respond to the attack that Senator Shaheen make, uh, made on me. She's misrepresented what I said. Senator Shaheen, you're entitled to your opinion, but don't make up facts about me. Don't make up facts about what I've said, because it's untrue. And please stop it. Well, you said it. I can't help that you I said it. I did not say it, Senator Shaheen. Read read the transcript it's pay attention part of your rec record. But this is not washington dc all right i'm an outsider i speak the truth now this pandemic is serious here's the tragedy with this pandemic is in 2009 2010 we had h1n1 pandemic and vice president uh, joe biden's chief of staff said last year <coughs> that it was a terribly mismanaged at the time and in fact he said that the only reason there weren't more deaths is pure luck that that virus wasn't deadly and guess what happened since then the government 
did nothing. Obama did nothing. Senator Shaheen did nothing to prepare for this. And we had another warning with the Ebola situation. And nothing was done by the Obama administration. And the, 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 the national stockpile was empty for this pandemic. And we need to go back and hold those politicians accountable who dropped the ball and found us in this position. The institutions of government were not ready for this pandemic. Mr. Messner, specifically, are you afraid of COVID? I am afraid of COVID. I think we all should be afraid of COVID. It is a virus, it's deadly, and we need to be careful. You know, but we should not be frozen in fear. You know, we must balance and live our lives. We should not be frozen in fear. Next question from Gene Mackin. Mr. Messner, hospitals in New Hampshire are likely to face record losses in 2020 and will continue to need federal assistance for the immediate future. Just yesterday, Lakes Region General Healthcare said they were going to file for bankruptcy. When this pandemic is over, would you support continued direct aid specifically to prevent the closure of New Hampshire's rural hospitals? How much would be needed? Yes, uh, I absolutely would support legislation to help our rural hospitals. I've spoke with the, uh, some executives from hospitals in the North Country uh, to assess their situation. This was about six or eight weeks ago. They were in pretty good shape. But, but we need to make sure these hospitals stay open, and that's why targeted help is important. We must target who needs help and provide the help to those who are in need and not this blanket approach that the Democrats want to take and just spend trillions and trillions of dollars to bail out California. We here in New Hampshire should not be bailing out California for their mismanagement prior to COVID. We should not be bailing out New York because of their mismanagement prior to COVID. We need to target the help to, to hospitals and communities that need it. And not, and not go on a spending spree uh, just because we can rationalize it with the COVID situation. Senator Shaheen, same question to you. Yes, well, there's no doubt that the hospitals in New Hampshire need help. Um, I talked about CMC where I visited St. Joseph's Lakes Region, sadly, um, went bankrupt this week. They not only need help as we're dealing with this pandemic and the healthcare people need, but they need help because they're also often the biggest employers in their community and so many people have been furloughed. Now, my opponent back in April said there was no urgent need for funding for hospitals. And now he wants to support a package that has been on the floor in the Senate that would have no funding to help hospitals, no funding to help healthcare workers, a limited amount of money to help testing and contact tracing. That's not the help we need. We heard from Jay Powell, the head of the Federal Reserve, last week, he said, we need a big package that helps all of those people who are hurting get through this pandemic. Mr. Messner, you were invoked, 30 seconds. Sure, sure. You know, under the original CARES Act, it was uh, ended up being $3.2 trillion, and there was assistance in that package for hospitals. And hospitals received the help they needed back then. Now, hospitals, some hospitals need more help, and that help ought to be provided. But the U.S. Senate needs to be nimble enough in a situation like this to provide help when needed and not get into these political negotiations that cause people to suffer even more than they need to. Next question from John DeStaso. Thank you. Now that we've seen the response to the pandemic, there has been criticism that the U.S. government was not adequately prepared. What is the single most important initiative that members of the Senate should be discussing and working on now to prevent the next one? Senator Shaheen. Well, we need to be looking at our um, public health system throughout this country. Um, we do need to look at the CDC. I had a, a very good conversation with Dr. Redfield at the CDC where he talked about wanting to um, really reform our public health system in this country when we get through this. But you know, as my opponent has talked about, um, the, criticized what happened in the previous administration, the fact is the problem that we have now is because of this administration. This is Donald Trump's America that we're in. 
where we've seen 8 million people who have contacted the coronavirus. We've seen uh, 220,000 deaths nationally. In New Hampshire, we have had almost 470 people die. It's a tragedy for those people and their families. And this president continues to take a blasé approach. And my opponent's going to be with him without wearing a mask. Um, he was with him at his last super spreader event without wearing a mask. And Mr. Mesner, same question. Yeah, a uh, couple things is the institutions of government did not learn from the H1N1 pandemic in 2010. And anybody in the U.S. Senate at that time, including Senator Shaheen, needs to be voted out of office because the institutions of government were not prepared. Now, we have much to learn from this pandemic, and we need people in the U.S. Senate who are going to be open-minded and actually get things done so that we are prepared the next time that this happens. You know, it doesn't help if you send the same people back over and over again, you know, who, who didn't learn from the last pandemic, and she won't learn from this pandemic. I don't know what super spreader event she's talking about and me not wearing a mask, but, you know, it's, I certainly wasn't at the White House. And again, Senator Shaheen, you're not entitled to your own facts. Senator, 30 seconds to respond. Yes, well, it was the event where President Trump was in New Hampshire. And um, the fact is, what we need is a consistent approach to this pandemic. We don't need what the Trump administration has been doing, where he refuses to wear a mask, where he brings people together at events. And my opponent fails to condemn what the president has done. This is the Trump administration's plan. And what we've seen is eight million people contract the disease and 220,000 deaths. That is not going to get us ahead of the coronavirus. Senator, that's time. And there were no yeah. cases contact traced to the Trump event in August. Yeah. Next question coming now from Jean Mackin. Thanks, Adam. To you, Mr. Messner, let's look into the future a little when we eventually get past this pandemic. What is the best way for the government to stimulate the economy and aid in its recovery from COVID-19? Name one or two proposals you would support. Yeah, I'd like to go back uh, first and point out that President Trump made a courageous decision at the end of January to, to stop travel from China. And, and Dr. Fauci has testified in front of Congress that that decision saved many, many lives. There are estimates that two million lives were saved. And what did the Democrats do? Condemn him, called him a racist. And Nancy Pelosi went to Chinatown, said things are safe. And, and I wish that uh, Senator Shaheen, in our last debate, she said she didn't criticize the president over that decision. So I sure would like to see her say that that was a good decision that President Trump made at the end of January because it saved a lot of lives, according to Dr. Fauci. So what would I do specifically? I have the Messner USA plan on my website, CorkyForSenate.com. It lays out various um, proposals that we could make to bring this economy back. All right, and now to you, Senator Shaheen, same question. Um, well, as I've said, what we need is additional funding for testing and contact tracing. We need consistent guidance, which we have not had at the federal level. And we need to ensure that we provide additional help so people can get through this period. Um, the fact is, I was not critical of the president's uh, travel ban to China. What I was critical of, as I said in the last debate, was that 40,000 people came in during that travel ban and spread the coronavirus. So it wasn't a very effective travel ban. Um, what we need is an effective response to this coronavirus, and we haven't seen it from this president. And my opponent continues to support this president's response to the coronavirus, as I said. It, he even suggested that when the president said people should think about drinking bleach, his words were, well, that was just aspirational. I'm sorry, but that's not aspirational. That's just downright dangerous. Mr. Messner, 30 seconds to respond. Uh, she's misrepresenting my words yet again. 
So, Senator Shaheen, are you, you suggesting, are you suggesting my, my that opponent. we should have kept out of the United States those 40,000 American citizens that needed to travel back here? Is that what you're suggesting after the shutdown of the travel ban? I'm suggesting that they should have been quarantined I, that is, that when is they un came back to the United States. No, that is un-America. If un you watched 60 Minutes on Sunday night, you would have seen people on Sunday night, you would have seen left back in. people on. You wanted to keep Americans out of this country? I wanted what them quarantined kind, what kind to make sure that they were not that, bringing to tell, to not coronavirus bring senators back, back to the United States. Okay. 30 country. seconds, 30 seconds for Mr. Senator Sheen. That was the problem. The problem was that people came in and they, there was no guarantee that they weren't infected. One of the reasons that we saw the spread of the coronavirus was because there were not consistent measures put in place, which is what we need in order to get ahead of this pandemic. And that's what happened with the travel ban. That's what happened with the failure to ban people from coming from Europe. And so we saw a spread. And that's one of the reasons we now have had 220,000 deaths in the United States. Next question from John DeStaso. Thank you. So Senator, uh, we've already discussed the government's economic response to COVID-19. Uh, as you know, the CARES Act alone cost trillions of dollars. Couple that with less revenue from the downturn and, and from unemployment and the deficit, the whole gets bigger. President Trump and Congress passed one and a half trillion dollar tax cut in 2017. These bills will all come due and it's led to a discussion about repealing those tax cuts and raising others. So first, would you vote to repeal the Trump tax cuts? And second, what if any taxes beyond that are you willing to raise? And please be specific to an income level or the type of corporations that, that they would affect. I didn't support the Trump tax bill in 2017 because it gave 83% of the benefits to the biggest corporations. I support the middle class tax cuts. Unfortunately, that bill made those temporary. It made the 83% of the benefits to the biggest corporations permanent. I think we've got to look at closing loopholes for in our tax laws. It doesn't make sense that Amazon made $12 billion in 2018, and yet they paid zero in taxes. We need to end subsidies to the oil and gas companies because they're operating, they don't need those subsidies. We need to look at things like our fuel efficiency in um, our government vehicles. It's one of the pieces of legislation I've supported. And I've also supported ending the write-off, the tax write-off for our pharmaceutical companies on their advertising, because I think they shouldn't be able to get double um, the write-off for advertising and raising their prices. And Mr. Messer, same question, please. Yes, um, Joe Biden, wants to repeal the Trump tax cuts. That means there will be a tax increase for the middle class. Senator Shaheen did not answer the question. She supports Joe Biden's position to repeal the Trump tax cuts and therefore raise taxes on the middle class. It is very, very important that we bring this economy back vibrantly and we bring it back vibrantly by keeping taxes low and government out of the way and empower Americans to, to work hard, use their ingenuity, get their businesses going, uh, spark additional businesses, and grow this economy vibrantly. And, and when we grow the economy vibrantly, our, our tax revenues will increase as the economy grows. Senator, 30 seconds to respond. Do you want to raise taxes? Well, I gave you a number of areas where I think we should look at how we could address our tax code in a way to produce revenue. I support tax cuts for middle income Americans, and I support tax cuts for small businesses. That's where I focus my attention from the time that I was governor. Um, we need to encourage small businesses to grow. Um, that's why I worked with Cory Gardner, Republican from Colorado, to repeal the health insurance tax. It's why I worked to repeal the medical device tax so that companies like Smith's Medical over in Keene could do the innovation they need in order to produce additional uh, medical devices that help people with health care. So uh, I think there are a number of areas that we can cut, and that's what I've done. That's time. All right. We've the hit timing. The 
<laughs> We've hit the half hour mark and we're going to do a little lightning round to shake things up here. Uh, starting with you, Mr. Mesner. What's the best place to stop and enjoy the view along the Kank? Jeez. Oh, uh, the best place. I, you know, I have been all over New Hampshire, every corner of the state. And, and there are so many views, uh, wonderful views in New Hampshire that it's hard for me to say which is the best. Um, so I love it here. I'll continue going around the state and, and campaigning. Uh, Thank you. And that's, these are, I just have said 15 second answers. So uh, lightning quick, I guess. Senator Shaheen, uh, what is your favorite place to stop and enjoy the view along the Kank? You know, right after you get on the Kank, there is an old covered bridge that is no longer in operation. That is a beautiful spot there over the, um, the creek and especially when the foliage is at peak. All right, and still to you, Senator Shaheen, what is one of your, or who is one of your political heroes? Well, in history, it's Marilla Ricker, who was um, one of the first women in New Hampshire to run for governor um, before women could get the right to vote. And she consistently fought to try and help women get the right to vote. There's going to be a new memorial to her in the seacoast. I think she's a great role model. Mr. Mesner, name one of your political heroes. Yeah, I'd have to say Ronald Reagan. Uh, Ronald Reagan, uh, his policies, his, his peace through strength policy, his economic policies um, resulted in the end of the Cold War. And that was a, a, an incredibly significant event. Still to you, Mr. Mesner, will you be voting absentee or in person? Uh, I'll be voting in person. And Senator Shaheen, how about you? Voting absentee or in person? In person. Okay, in also person. to you, Senator Shaheen, Puerto Rico is holding another referendum on statehood in November. Will you vote in favor of that in the U.S. Senate if they want to join the union, yes or no? I, I'm not going to speculate on that, Adam. Um, it's the same question, conversation we had earlier. And we have to wait and see what Puerto Rico does, and then we have to see what kind of legislation is brought to Congress. But, but if they want to join the union, should they not be admitted? Well, again, I think we need to see what what the circumstances are around that, what, um, what requirements would be part of that, um, what contributions they might make. I think there are a number of things we need to look at with respect to whether they would become another state. Uh, Mr. Messner, would you support Puerto Rican statehood? Well, you know, the Democrat non-answers on these issues like Joe Biden refusing to answer whether the Democrats will pack the court if they if they take the presidency in the Senate, uh, same kind of answer. You know, the, the Democrats want to pack the Senate by bringing in Puerto Rico and the District of Columbia, and they're not answering the question. This election is very important. That's time because Mr. Mesner. of that. Okay, let's wrap up the lightning round here uh, with another lighter question. Mr. Mesner, where do you buy your New Hampshire maple syrup? <laughs> Uh, I, I buy it at the uh, Wolfboro Food Co-op. And Senator Shaheen, where's your favorite place to buy some New Hampshire maple syrup? It's at Demerit Hill Farm. Okay, let's get back to the policy questions and John DeStaso. Thank you. Let's move to the Supreme Court now. Uh, the Senate vote to approve President Trump's Supreme Court nominee will likely take place in the next few days. Senator Shaheen, before the even before the debate begins in the full Senate, you've already said that you will vote against Judge Amy Coney Barrett. This will make three consecutive Supreme Court nominees you voted against, all uh, nominees of President Trump. You voted in favor of two judges nominated by President Obama. Have you decided you'll never vote for another Supreme Court nominee put forth by a, pres a Republican president? Is this because of a litmus test that you have for that person who would need to be on the same side as you uh, in key, uh, over key issues? No, John, I sadly, what we have watched under the Trump administration is appointing, nominating ever more judges with ever more extreme views on the issues that are important to the American people. Um, we need to go back to looking at judges who have a more mainstream perspective because what the Trump administration is doing is actually packing the court. Um, what we've seen with Amy Coney Barrett last week during her hearings was that she 
doesn't support the Affordable Care Act, which is so important to so many Americans, and the Supreme Court is going to be taking up that issue next week, after, or the week after the election. Um, we saw that she opposes women's reproductive rights. I mean, she even endorsed an ad from a group that would criminalize um, in vitro fertilization. I, I think that's a view that's just too extreme for the American people. Thank you. And Mr. Messner, uh, with the way the U.S. Senate is working now and the partisan divide, uh, voters will likely assume that you would, would enter the Senate and vote yes to a Trump nominee and no to a Biden nominee. Why would they be wrong to think that uh, you, such a strong supporter of the president, would break with the party? Well, first of all, John, I'd like to say, unlike Amy Coney Barrett, I have notes that I've been taking. <laughs> um, I said in a previous debate that I thought Merrick Garland should have, uh, should have got a hearing in the Senate and a vote in the Senate. Uh, I would evaluate judges on their temperament, their, their jurisprudence, um, their accomplishments, and I will look at each judge objectively. I think it's a huge mistake for U.S. Senators to, to try to predict what kind of decisions a Supreme Court justice would make in the future. I think, I think uh, these nominees should be evaluated um, on their abilities. Amy Coney Barrett is an amazing choice. She's, she's brilliant, she's accomplished, she's a great role model for women and young girls. And, uh, and I think it's a mistake. If you listen to the hearings, you should have listened to what she talked about, the importance of precedence in the Supreme Court, and don't assume that she's gonna overturn things. Quick follow-up, uh, in terms of overturning things, Senator Shaheen, if Roe v. Wade is overturned by the Supreme Court and the issue of abortion is returned to the states, how would you respond in the U.S. Senate? I think we need to look at national legislation that would essentially put into law what's in the Roe v. Wade decision. Um, but, you know, unfortunately, my opponent is not willing to let women make their own choices on reproductive rights. He supports Amy Coney Barrett's extreme position on this issue. In fact, he has an extreme position on reproductive rights. He would oppose abortion even in cases of rape and incest. He has said that he would jail doctors who performed abortions. I think that is out of the mainstream of the values of people in New Hampshire. You know, unfortunately, my opponent is not from New Hampshire. Um, he doesn't know me. He doesn't know my record. He doesn't know the state in the way that we need to. We need someone who can represent the views of the people of New Hampshire, who's going to work um, with people who on both sides of the aisle to make a difference for this state. Mr. That's Mr. what I've done in my years in the Senate. Mr. Messner, we'll give you 30 seconds to respond and then a minute on Roe v. Wade. Yeah, uh, Senator Shaheen had the opportunity to vote to codify Roe v. Wade in the Born Alive Act. And she voted no. The, the Born Alive Act said if a, if a baby survives an abortion, that baby is entitled to the same medical standard of care of every, anybody. She voted no. She's for passive infanticide. That is extreme. That so there was exactly an opportunity. Wrong. There was My an opportunity. My opponent is not correct there, on that. There's an we opportunity. There's an opportunity for you to vote in a way that wrong. was consistent with Roe v. Wade. You're wrong. You had an opportunity to vote in a way you, that's consistent with Roe v. Wade. My opponent can't make up Wade. his facts. He's the, Senator, let's let Mr. Messner finish. He is wrong on that. Mr. Messner, please finish your point. Can I start over? Just make your point, please. So the Born Alive Act, Senator Shaheen voted no. The Born Alive Act is designed to prevent passive infanticide. And in Roe v. Wade, passive infanticide is not permitted. Senator Shaheen, 30 seconds to respond. The legislation that he's talking about would have put into law what is already illegal, and that is infanticide. But it would have gone beyond that. It would have jailed drug um, jailed doctors who would perform abortions. Again, that's what my opponent supports. That's outside of the mainstream of New Hampshire values. See, there's a difference between my opponent and me. 
He thinks government should make decisions about what women do. I think women, in consultation with their doctors, with their families, should make decisions about their own reproductive health. That's a very big difference between my opponent and me. It's time we want to move on to some other questions. We have a foreign policy question tonight from a student at St. Anselm College. Let's take a listen. With the COVID-19 pandemic, people are questioning its origin. We all know that the virus originated in China, and China has recently been telling the world that they've successfully controlled the virus. Although, recent reports suggest China's lying. As the facts aren't lining up, would you consider COVID-19 a national security threat created by China? And if so, how would you improve our, na improve our national security from Chinese threats? First to you, Mr. Mesner. Yeah, I, uh, I think so much that the Chinese Communist, Party, Chinese Communist Party does now is a threat to our national security. And, and we need to hold them accountable for the COVID-19 crisis. During the Obama Shaheen years, they allowed our jobs to be exported to China. They allowed the Chinese to steal our intellectual property. We need to now recognize that the Chinese Communist Party is intent on dominating the world economically and militarily. And it's, and it's time that we have people in the U.S. Senate that will remember that and hold the Chinese Communist Party accountable for the COVID-19 crisis. Senator Shaheen, now to you. Um, we do need to hold China accountable for COVID. They clearly didn't provide accurate information about what was going on there. Um, I don't think they're still providing accurate information about what's happening with COVID. And what we need to do is to put back in place the national security team that the Trump administration um, disassembled that can look for those kinds of threats when they're happening around the world. Um, and I think China's not just a threat with respect to COVID, but it's a long-term threat, both economically and militarily. That's why I just signed on to legislation that would address China's threat, that would support additional diplomatic and economic aid to counter what China is doing. And you know, my opponent keeps talking about the threat from China, yet he advertised his law firm as representing companies in China and actually represented a Chinese government-backed company against an American manufacturing firm. And I don't, I don't think we should be doing that. That's not the kind of policy towards China we need. Mr. Messner, 30 seconds to respond. One, I think uh, Senator Shaheen should be as critical uh, of Joe Biden and Hunter Biden and, and their corruption out of China. And two, I, I wish she would look at her own husband's law firm's advertisements and advertising to, re, uh, to represent sexual predators and bragging about getting pedophiles off the hook and wanting more se sexual predator, pet, predators in the law firm to represent them. And I might remind you, Bill Shaheen is a politician He's on the Democrat National Committee. Senator Shaheen, 30 seconds to respond. Yeah, my husband, my, my opponent might like to be running against my, hus my husband, but he's not. He's running against me. And I'm happy to take responsibility for my record and what I have worked on in the Senate. My opponent should take responsibility for what he's done with his law firm and representing China. He said that he wouldn't have done it if he had been running for office. Well, if it was wrong when you're running for office, then it's wrong before you're starting to run for office. So this, is, this should be about what you have done, what my opponent has done, and That's what fine. I have done, Look, not what on. my husband has done. We're going to move on to the next question from Jean Mack. Thanks, Adam. Just last month, the U.S. deployed radar, increased the frequency of U.S. fighter patrols, and deployed Bradley fighting vehicles to augment U.S. forces in eastern Syria. That means more involvement in that country, in addition to thousands of troops in Iraq and Afghanistan. Senator Shaheen, the U.S. has now had fighting forces in these three countries in one way or, no or another for about 20 years. At this point, are you resigned to have a permanent presence there? Well, I disagreed with both President Obama and President Trump on their handling of Syria. Um, I think we should not have withdrawn the troops from northeast Syria that the President Trump decided to do because now he's put troops back into Syria. And we would have been better off, it would have cost 
less money for us to maintain those troops who were there who were providing some stability in northeast Syria and also um, providing some balance to what Russia was doing, what Iran has been doing, and what Assad is doing in Syria. So I, I think what we need to do is work with the international community to, um, to go back at both Iran and Russia for the influence that they are doing in the Middle East. And this, what our policy is, is really not clear at this point because the president has flip-flopped on what we're going to be doing there. Thank you. And Mr. Messner, you've been critical of the number of troops in that region, but considering the difficult nature of the war on terror, would withdrawing at this point be a retreat and dangerous to our national security? Uh, well, first of all, I think President Trump ought to be commended for bringing peace to the Middle East. I think secondly, uh, Senator Shaheen, uh, you know, has been in the Senate for 12 years during this, this war. And when President Trump repositioned those soldiers uh, on the Syrian border with Turkey, she made a comment to Andrea Mitchell that, you know, we can keep them there at a minor cost. Senator Shaheen said that losing I'm only a, full, a few soldiers, only a few soldiers getting killed it's is what okay. what you're criticizing me for. So, let me tell you, I take that personally, and I, because I have two sons that are serving, one at West Point, one who just graduated from West Point, and we need to take care of our fighting soldiers. And moms and dads out there, you don't want a U.S. senator who thinks losing a few soldiers is okay to keep people somewhere. Senator, 30 seconds to respond. Yeah, that is absolutely wrong. I would never say that losing soldiers was okay. In fact, when it became clear that Russia was putting bounties on American troops in Afghanistan, I spoke out. I called on the president to say something to Vladimir Putin. My opponent did nothing on that. He, he didn't call out the president. He didn't say, talk to Vladimir Putin. That is unacceptable. He is just wrong. I would never say that losing our troops was acceptable, and he knows it. 15 seconds to respond, Mr. Messner. Senator Shaheen, if you look at that tape and you see that you said, we've only you lost a few wrong, soldiers, will you withdraw from the race? What I said was the cost of keeping troops there in terms of dollars, it was about $200 million, was something that was worth the expense. Mr. You're lying. Quick You're lying. To you, Mr. Messner. you said we've only lost a few soldiers. Thank goodness. That's what you said. Mr. Messner, if that's you... what the tape says, will you withdraw? Mr. Messner, a question. I, I'm to not going to. Go ahead, Senator, if you'd like to speak. You can. Okay. Mr. Well, Messner is disengaging. My, my from... opponent is just not accurate. And that's the problem. He doesn't know me, he doesn't know my record, and he doesn't know New Hampshire. Mr. Mesner, is disengaging from Syria in some way disrespectful or dishonoring the memory of James Foley? No, I don't think so. I, th I think we need to move forward in a way that, that um, protects our allies in the Middle East. Israel is so important. Uh, they're our closest ally. Uh, we need to make sure they're secure. Jordan is an ally. We need to make sure they're secure. Uh, it's time that, that we uh, uh, stop these endless wars. It, it's time that, that we focus on our friends who will help us. It's time that we bring the, bring the troops home. Uh, we can't go on like this forever and ever. And it's tragic what happened to James Foley. I, I might say that, that President Trump uh, uh, defeated the, the ISIS, and he's held uh, terrorists accountable, and, and, you know, and he killed Soleimani, he killed al-Baghdadi, and, uh, and those were good things to rid the world of those terrorists. Senator Shaheen, we know what happened to Mr. Foley, but how do you justify the continued presence of American troops in a region that just doesn't seem to want us there? Well, I think in Afghanistan, 
Um, we know why we're there. We're there because we want to ensure that terrorists no longer have a foothold there to attack the United States. That's also the reason we went into Syria and Iraq, so that we can make sure that terrorists can't attack the United States. And we need to continue to work on that. We have thousands of ISIS detainees around the world. We need to ensure that those ISIS detainees go back to the countries that they came from, because there is a, a hotbed there in Iraq, on the border between Iraq and Syria. Um, I'm proud of the work that I did with the Foley Foundation and the Foley family to bring back to the United States the Beatles, who are accused of being responsible for the murder of James Foley and three other Americans. I worked with the uh, National Security Advisor, O'Brien, and with our military to ensure that they could come back to stand trial in civilian court so we can hold them accountable and show the rest of the terrorists in the world that they shouldn't mess with the United States. Next question from John DeStaso. Thank you. Um, Mr. Mesner, you've said that one of the first bills you would support in the Senate is one that protects people with pre-existing conditions from being denied health insurance if the Affordable Care Act is dismantled. But what would that bill look like? Would there be a cap on the amount an insurance company could charge someone with a pre-existing condition? Would there be a list of conditions? Yeah, I would, I would include several things in that bill. One is nobody should ever be denied health insurance because of a pre-existing condition. Nobody. Now, we, we have time here to deal with this. The Supreme Court is hearing oral, oral arguments for the Affordable Care Act on November 10th. And the way that the Supreme Court operates, there will not be a decision on that case until next May or June. So we have time to, to, to provide legislative fixes in case the Supreme Court overturns the ACA. Now, I happen to believe the Supreme Court will not overturn it. You've heard talk about severability during the Amy Coney Barrett hearings, and I, I do not believe they will overturn the entire law. But we need to, we need to have legislation in case they do, protecting people. We need, to, we need to allow insurance companies to sell insurance across state lines. Senator Shaheen, when she was governor, the health insurance companies in New Hampshire went from 26 to three because of the legislation she passed, which resulted in very high health care costs. Time. And Senator, um, in 2017, you were in favor of, of the Medicare for All bill sponsored by Bernie Sanders. In 2019, you opposed that bill saying, quote, there are faster ways to reach universal coverage by building on the progress of the Affordable Care Act. So if the ACA is gone, what would be your alternative? Would that be Medicare for All? No, I think there are faster ways to cover people than to put in a whole new system. I think private insurance has worked, but we, it's working now because of the Affordable Care Act that says to insurance companies that you can't deny people coverage with pre-existing conditions. If my opponent listened to some of the people with pre-existing conditions, and when, at our first debate, he denied that we had um, hundreds of thousands of people in New Hampshire with pre-existing conditions. But if he listened to somebody like Dan Faltus from Swansea, who had cancer and a heart condition, who before the Affordable Care Act could not get health insurance, or Chelsea Lewis, whose daughter has tuberous sclerosis, and she, um, she would have reached her lifetime caps a long time ago under health insurance before the Affordable Care Act. That's the system that my opponent wants us to go back to. Senator, that's time. We want to get to one last question here before we hit our closing statements. Mr. Mesner, tell us about one specific person you've talked with during your campaign who truly touched you. You have 30 seconds. Yeah, in fact, just the other day, I was, uh, I was in Portsmouth, and, and a woman uh, drove the whole way from Claremont to Portsmouth to see me. And, and she said to me simply, I wanted to come meet you. And I want you to know that I'm praying for you and we have a prayer group in Claremont praying for you. And that, that was very, very touching to me. Senator Shaheen, name one person who's touched you during this campaign season. Um, a woman up in Berlin who I don't wanna give her name, but she handed me a note after a town hall up there to say that 
I and my staff had literally saved her life because she needed health care, she couldn't get it, and we had helped put her in touch with that health care. So um, what the Affordable Care Act is so important to so many people in New Hampshire. We can't let that get overturned. That's what my opponent would support. So we've given both candidates one minute each for a closing statement. Senator Shaheen, you go first. Um, well, thank you to WMUR for hosting us. I think what listeners have heard is two very different ver visions of what um, a United States Senator should support from New Hampshire. I believe we need to make sure that all people get access to health care. That's what the Affordable Care Act has allowed to happen. We also need to lower prescription drug costs. That's what I've been working on and will continue to work on. We need to make sure that women have access to reproductive rights. Um, we need to ensure that we invest in infrastructure in things like um, the downtown in Concord where I worked with Steve Dupree and Mayor Boulay in Concord to ensure that they could get a build grant to rebuild that downtown because that's what our small businesses need in order to be successful. My opponent has a very different vision of all of those issues. I hope people will look at my record and decide they can support me on November the 3rd. I ask for your vote. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Now a final statement for you, Mr. Messner. I grew up in a blue collar family. We didn't have much. I went to West Point, I served, I'm a veteran. I started a successful business. With some hard work and luck, I grew that business. It's time that we get someone in the U.S. Senate who knows how to get things done, who will serve only you and not be loyal to progressives in Washington, D.C. I am running because Jean Shaheen has been there too long. Her time is up. She's a career politician. She doesn't care about you. She does what Chuck Schumer, Nancy Pelosi, and AOC tells her to do. That's what she does. And it's time that, that she go away, that her career is done. She can go and retire in York, Maine. And it's time to get new blood in, in the U.S. Senate for Granite Staters. I will do the harder right instead of the easier wrong. Please vote for me, Corky for Senate.com. My phone number is 603-515-6542. Give me a call. Thank you to Mr. Me Mr. Mesner. Thank you to Senator Shaheen in Washington. And thank you to all of you at home for watching tonight's debate. If you missed any part of this, you can catch it, of course, on all of our digital platforms. Join us tomorrow evening for the candidates for the 1st Congressional District. Have a great night.